back again for a nice simple show. I'll just move this a little bit more that way so I can see the recording stuff. Let's go. G'day trendsetters, welcome to episode 172 of the Trendsmooth Podcast. My name is Tim Egg, and if you have any questions you'd like to submit for the show, jump on through to the website, trainsmooth.com, or if you just want to bounce an idea off to me or something, anything at all, my email is tim at trainsmooth.com. So today's question, nice, easy, quick, simple question comes from Craig. Aero helmets with visors, yes or no? Nice and simple. So it depends there. Eh? <laughs> Start off every every episode with it. Well, it depends. So you've got to keep in mind with a few things with these visors. Yes, uh, in wind tunnels, they're proven to be that little bit faster. Um, you don't need to be scavenging around to put your goggle, um, put your sunglasses on, and then put your aero helmet over top, and then you think to yourself, "Oh, I put my aero helmet on first, but then you put your sunglasses on outside. So when you get off the bike, your sunglasses comes off. So a little bit of thought can go into wearing a pair of sunglasses and just a little bit of a hack for those people who do not want to spend that half a second longer in transition. If you tuck your sunglasses into your bottle cage holder, so they're just just one arm of your thing, so you hop on your bike, you start pedaling, and then you can pull your sunnies out when you're comfortable and put them on. But also, or try and make sure your, goggle, your sunglasses are tucked underneath your strapping. So when you get your helmet off, the sunglasses stay on. And if you rate, and if you're doing seventy point three or Ironman, they after the, you know a good couple of hours, two to three, four, five hours, six hours in the saddle, um, your sunglasses become a little bit mucky. So you want a second pair of sunglasses in transition for the run. So and you know me being a tightwad, I get. I get those good looking sunglasses, super cheap. I used to get sunglasses from pro, pro triathletes, um, but pay you know nickels on the dollar for them, and and they and they last a long time. But unfortunately, uh, my triathlon budget's been chopped right down by my accountant, who doubles up as my wife, and so I'm trying to stretch my stretch my triathlon budget. So I go the super cheap ones these days. Um, but that's just me being a tight one. So to actually answer your question with the um, visors, you got to keep in mind if you're racing in a hot temperature place, you're getting less less air hitting your face. So your body temperature will, you know, this will increase. You're cooking a helmet, so you're sorry, you're cooking your your head a, a little bit there. At least with sunnies, you're getting getting that airflow hitting hitting most of your face. Uh, it doesn't sound like a big thing, and it may not be a big thing for some people, but it is a thing to consider. For instance, um, you look at um, calf guards, for instance. Uh, every, every every second person used to have calf guards on. Well, that actually can increase your body temperature. I remember racing Ironman Western Australia once, and I had calf guards because I'd get cramps on the run, and I, they just... Keep things nice, you know, nice and tight. And they're just a, a little side note. If you and if you suffer from shin splints, especially on your long runs or any time you run on the road, try to start wearing calf guards. They just keep everything um, more more firm. They just lose it less less the risk. Um, but that's just just one little thing of many you've got to do with shin splints. But if you want more, send me a question about shin splints. Um, so. I, I digress so much, I, I've lost my train of thought. So you, I, I did Ironman Western Australia with calf guards, and the thing with Ironman Western Australia is you're surrounded by a little bit, a fair bit of bushland or at main, at main parts of the bike, and there's very, very little wind out there. And all of a sudden, your body temperature starts, you know, you start getting hotter and hotter, and I'm thinking, my God, my legs are burning here. I just wanted to pull them down and, and cut them off. But I didn't want to stop. But but that's and that's kind of the same theory here with the visors. That getting less airflow. So I say to athletes that are, especially ones that are doing hot races that aren't especially aren't used to hot races, or if they're not that fast, I say forget your aero helmet altogether. Just wear a road helmet. Get that airflow hitting your head. Keep your keep your brain cooling down a little. Um, and those those aero helmets they, they look cool, but the benefits really doesn't kick in until until you know mid thirties thirty kilometers an hour, and they really kick in when you're at forty kilometers an hour. So, for most age groupers, 
we're we're using our helmets more for looks than uh, than you know anything. Uh, and you know you go oh well you know I'm going down this part here I'm going to be you know sitting at sixty k's an hour seventy k's an hour there and I'm going to have this here and that there and so I'll get benefits here and benefits there but it's gonna you know I'm going to be doing this and that so I can understand why people wear them I wear them I, I like the look of them but um and and you know some parts of the race they're definitely going to be very uh, beneficial but not as you know not as beneficial that where I think oh it's probably wear a road helmet just as just as well but with the visors yeah they look they look cool as shit they're cool as crap too I, I do like the look of them but i never use them my my helmet actually comes from a pro triathlete i, I brought super cheap you're getting this pattern here i'm a tight one and anything good of mine i generally buy off pro triathletes and, and you know you just for, for another side note here i should call this a side note episode you contact 10 pro triathletes and see what, what they've got for sale. Half won't contact you back. And the other the other half, they've got boxes of crap. Now, just a little, another side note of the side note here. I wouldn't contact Yarn or someone like, or, or Kinlay, someone like that. One of the top notches, they're getting, you know, they're way up top. You want to hear, you want to hear, be harassing mid-pack pro triathletes. Ones that have got good sponsors, but you know they're they're not a listers. They're the they're the better ones to contact, and they they've got boxes and crap in their garage. And if that if they can liquidate any of that, they they're more than happy to. Um, but that's a side note of the side note. So yeah, it's up to you, mate. If you're going, Craig, if you're going to be racing in co- in cooler temperatures or temperatures that are very manageable, and the heat won't bother you whatsoever, or yeah, go for it because they look cool, and just, just, and it doesn't matter about performance. In twenty years' time, the only thing that's going to matter is that race photo, and you want to look cool. <laughs> so just, just consider that. Uh, and there is, there are signs that they are a little bit faster too, um, from from wind tunnel testing. But it's all very, you know, over something like a, a seventy point three. We're, we're probably just talking there, one or two seconds. You know, I couldn't imagine it's going to be too, a, a hell of, you know, I couldn't imagine it's going to take minutes off your time. So you're just going more for looks than anything. Now, if you're an elite, um, you know, if you're a pro triathlete and you're fighting for seconds, yeah, I can, I can definitely understand wearing that. But, yeah, why not? If you guys have any other questions, jump on through to the website, trainsmove.com. Send me an email, tim at trainsmove.com. Till tomorrow, hooroo. See you later.